Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name's Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Jim, you want to talk rabbits today? I'm ready to talk rabbits. Well, show off some rabbits, man. What do you got? <laughs> I have my uh, patreon.com slash Jim Rugg where you can download my out-of-print zines like this ballpoint pen sketch catalog featuring a rabbit. So, <laughs> oh, and there's a deer. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can find this. You can find a lot of my original art, a lot of my comics art, uh, comics making and process posts. Basically, the stuff we talk about on Cartoonist Kayfabe is what is all over my Patreon, except focused on my work, my art, my drawings, my ideas about comics. So you can find that and more at patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. This is so cool, Jimmy. <laughs> Red Room Issue 1 is going to be coming out May 2021, first issue, 60, uh, 64 pages, man, triple size compared to your average uh, job or comic out there. That's a graphic novel. It really is, right? And uh, it's going to be coming out on a monthly basis. Murder on the Dark Web, Front and Profit. Uh, we're taking some modern day themes of the Dark Web, injecting horror elements to the game. Here are some of the various uh, variant covers. There's a Jim Rugg by way of Dan Clow's 8-Ball Issue 1 cover. Uh, Peach Momoko did a variant cover. And uh, Third Eye Comics in Maryland, they have about five shops. They ordered a 1,000 copies. They get a special cover. If you want to read these comics ahead of time, you can hit my Patreon, patreon.com slash Ed Piscor. And uh, with that out of the way, let's talk about rabbits. Let's talk about, about uh, stabbing weapons. Let's talk about Stan Sakai on the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel, Jim. Yes, indeed. Stan Sakai is, is where I was hoping you were going there, Ed. One of the longtime cartoonists who do, does a creator-owned uh, character and title and has been doing it for since the mid eighties, it's, it's incredible. You know, it's, it's, uh, on the Mount Rushmore of these cartoonists who have been making comic books and, and really singular vision kind of comic books like Usagi. Um, not too many comics like this out there. What a stunning cover to this. I think it's just beautiful. When I, uh, when I was a kid, just kind of like being led by my own curiosities and stuff, what kid in the eighties was not a fan of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, right? I had the Usagi Yojimbo action figure. I always loved the episodes where he popped up. And my uncle would come visit the house. My grandparents lived on the bottom floor. We lived on the top two floors. He would always come visit his parents, man, bring them some of the magazines he read that previous week. He would bring me comics that he finished reading that he got from the flea market. And I got uh, issues of Critters from, uh, from uh, Uncle Gus. And I'm looking in the back. They're later issues. And, you know, in the back you could... Um, buy earlier stuff from the catalog. See the name Yusaki Yojimbo? That can't be. There must be something else. I see an image of probably even this cover because that's all Fantagraphics. And it just inspired my curiosity in such a big way. How did this... So this character has a comic too, but it's not Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's its own thing. Like... Does every cartoon have a comic? Like, I had so much curiosity and uh, very excited to take a look at uh, Yusaki Yojimbo number one. Uh, for those who are playing at home who have come uh, to Yusaki Yojimbo much later through trade paperbacks and stuff, um, the first issue is uh, the Samurai book, which is, which is volume two of trade paperbacks. The first uh, trade paperback is called Ronin. That's a bunch of the critters right. stories. So we're, we're now getting into, you know, his, his own series and, uh, playing around with like all of the kind of great cliches of the samurai movie, uh, in this issue from, you know, the, the uh, sort of Bushido duels to the kind of kill bill grasshopper, take me as your student senpai kohai kind of gimmick yeah well said uh i noticed references that i would associate with ronin going through this uh which was also referencing both manga and those old samurai movies uh pretty cool the thing that stood out to me reading this this week because i had not read this story before is how uh fully formed stan sakai is at this point 1986 is your is your copyright here i think it's published in 87 um you know because he's been doing this character up to today and continuing on, hopefully for a long time, I look at him and think mature cartoonist now, but like, this is very accomplished from, I know it's not the first appearance, but from the get go, this is really strong cartooning and pretty consistent with where he is today. There's some evolution 
but as a cartoonist, as a comic book, this thing looks great. I love like some of these flourishes for background, little hatching and line work. Really like that stuff. Um, same with like the patterns, you know, that look like they're hand, the, those dots hand drawn and things. Just very pretty comics for being like an anamorphic character, a, a rabbit. There's a lot of range of what that might look like. I think this is your best possible outcome. <laughs> very well cartooned, mm -hmm. uh, making the most of the format that he's able to tell the story. Black and white comic. How do we break that up? Let's get some of these textures. These are very Tezuka textures, yes. by the way. Um, extremely well paced. Uh, this this comic, two chapters of uh, Samurai. It it doesn't give you much, man. You you want to come back for the next one. Here's our first kind of major uh, kung fu movie, right. Akira Kurosawa type, uh, Yo Jimbo, if you will, uh, sort of sequence, man, where you have the clashing of swords, you have your pregnant pause moment, you know somebody's going down. You know it's not going to be Yusaki Yojimbo. I love his his uh, design, too. S Sakai's such a good cartoonist, and we'll see... I, I see him letter other stuff. There's yeah, a, there's a Gru comics. Gru, right. Um, but you'll see perfect lettering. You know, like, as a craftsman, it's an exceptional level of craft. But the design for Yusagi is so strong. Very, very simple face, no extra lines, and complete range of expressions. Right. I just am in awe of... A cartoonist's ability to do that and he's very good at it let's take a let's take a trip way back man and take a look at young uh yusagi and you know he's young because he has polka dot eyes <laughs> and his ears aren't aren't tied up yet <laughs> <laughs> yeah he didn't get his top knot piece so now this is where we enter the phase of teach me something yeah they're heading off to go to uh sword school and uh, along the way they encounter this this lion Yes. And his uh, his rebelling students. Dispatches them real easy. One student, uh, Yusagi, is very impressed. The other one was like, oh, those guys are all probably jobbers, man. Yeah, first year students at best. <laughs> <laughs> so our guy Yusagi, man, he goes trailing after the sensei. And the sensei at every pass, man, is dissing them. I'm also surprised by like the cartoon characters designs for this because I have no interest in 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 furries in that culture and stuff but the funny animal thing of course has a long history in comics that's kind of wiped out for the most part in today's world you know you don't see it but I have like golden age uh funny animal comics so it's really neat to see that but you mentioned the turtles and it's like the whole aesthetic of being an animal cartoon character it, it kind of fascinates me because like whenever we see this samurai lion, he looks amazing. Like right. what a cool design. And then it's like, yeah, that could be a toy. All of these characters could be a toy. Was that calculated? Is it just some side effect of, of where his interests are as a cartoonist? It's such a fully realized world, I guess, is what I'm trying to say there. Makes sense, man. In a clumsy manner. <laughs> how, about, how about this realized world, Beautiful. man? Beautiful. Nice backgrounds, man. There have been a few examples of this kind of just gorgeous drawing. Uh, a couple of the earlier panels too. It's what makes this comic have the longevity it has. Right, right. If, are, it, if it were any, just one of the elements that we've talked about, it wouldn't last. There were a lot of strips in Critters, man. And right. uh, very few of them are continuing to this day. Beautiful compositions uh, within these panels. And this is, you know, Beatrix Kiddo uh, failing at every turn with every small task that she's given. And, you know, you small chunk it. You know, if you watch Jiro Dreams of Sushi, like, this permeates, like, the senpai kohai relationship. Like, the early young sushi chef, what do you get trusted with? You got to make the egg sushi. You, I can't even trust you with a fish. You got to make the perfect egg one. Take six months to even get there. Then maybe I'll give you one of those Allegheny white fish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you knew what that was, man. <laughs> he does such a good job with that pacing because it does feel like time passing. I think this is about two years worth of training that we're going to see in all. But it, at one point he talks about, you know, it's been six months without even touching the wooden training sword it's just really well paced it re yes the, like one of the things that kept coming across my mind like this entire time was just like 
Perfect pace. Perfect pace. We can look at it now, 30, 35 years later, and think like, oh yeah, he, 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 he stayed the course. But it's almost like he knew it then. He knew this character was going to, you know, like, like this is what he was going to do. Yeah, he's going to take Usagi into space in a couple of years. We <laughs> just got to get him an actual sword in order to get there. Another example of inventive, beautiful drawing. Great cartooning. It's like, use the brush for our main guy. You're bound by the limitations of the print technology at the time. Gary, Gary's not trying to make a color comic of your rabbit gimmick. So you got to bust out your um, rapidograph, man, to get the thin lines of the montage sequence. Also, uh, we were talking about, you know, uh, training montage yeah. zine. That's, that's, that's a, panel a damn for that. good one. That might be a cover for it. Uh, again, with the simple effects, he, he finally gets the sword. And now you're using your fine pen lines to create the, the sword is illuminating him. It's, it's glowing in his hands. Just got hold of the little briefcase from Pulp Fiction. <laughs> Oh, and then whenever they spring into action. And he actually caught him with a with a fair one, man. Caught him with a fair one, and he's actually like, oh, fuck, sensei. Like, because it's such a new sensation. Yes. He caught him with it. And the guy's actually a little older. And the the uh, sensei is like, I've been I've been waiting for this for six months, you, you lame. <laughs> you, fi you finally made it happen. And we didn't even get to the part where Usagi's getting right. to the story with the guy he killed at the beginning because that's what all this was leading up to you got to read issue two for that it's a funny payoff it's it's really a joke there at the end of, of him not getting to that to that point it seems like Stan Sakai is just I have 20 pages I'm gonna do 20 pages of Usagi and it ends where, where it ends yeah. pick it back up well whenever we pick it back up I'm excited to read more after reading this yes yes absolutely man I kind of want to track down Urban Gorilla. <laughs> That's such a funny looking everything to me. Scott Shaw, man, a staple of the San Diego Comic-Con. Yeah. Very Aragonese kind of piece right mm -hmm. there, man. And it's Fantagraphics trading ads with Renegade Press, which is uh, noteworthy, I believe. Oh, man, I almost thought that said Don Donahue, who, who, who would have been the publisher of uh, uh, Zap Comics. Yeah, Doherty, I don't, I don't recognize that name. Mm-mm. Eclipse Comics, trading ads with uh, Scott McCloud. And then we have a uh, Dennis Fujitaki strip doing his best uh, Gilberg of like a Von Bode kind of gimmick, man. He's a very good cartoonist on his own. He but, is. It's but, pretty sharp. But this is uh, his Von Bode hat. Yeah, you think of the black and white era and how bad a lot of it is. A lot of people first time, you know, maybe their first published work or whatever. This is pretty exceptional craft as well. Um you know the, the the high end of what was what was coming out in that black and white boom is always impresses me. Fanographics had the good shit, man. You know, Fanographics had the good stuff. Yeah, there's some really pretty stuff here, like the planes crashing into each other. That's exceptional, especially for a funny animal comic. Yeah. That's a great plane. I used to have those little styrofoam planes that would have the plastic propellers. Oh, yeah, and yeah. And they would look, the little they rubber would be printed on the sides of the planes to look like certain models. And I always loved this one that had like the two pieces that the wing would go through. We live in a universe, man, where there are two Fantagraphics books called Dog Boy. <laughs> <laughs> More proof of the simulation. <laughs> Steve Laffler, man. Can you name some of these characters here, man? I mean, that looks like Bullwinkle. Usagi. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Is that Captain Jack? Yeah, it's Captain, Captain Jack. Jack. Yeah. And then, dude, that's Sam Keith, man. That's a is. Oh, wow. How cool, right? That is pretty good. And you could find, like, there are issues, man, where there are Sam Keith is comics and critters. Usagi uh, book one is listed here to give you an idea of like the short stories that have appeared before this. Yeah. Um, a lot of the critter stuff and, and whatnot. So as we said, not the first appearance, but um, certainly when you look at his career now, it's very early on. Yes. There's that Fuji Fujitaki back cover, man. Boy, they look good together. Like the orange highlights and stuff. It's the same color palette. Yeah, agreed, man. And it looks like a similar, like maybe the same person colored it. That's possible. That would make a lot of sense. Yeah. Fun to look at. Yusaki Yojimbo, number one. Perhaps not the last uh, Stan Sakai we're going to be looking at uh, on the channel. Uh, maybe in the future we, we look at actual TPB's worth uh, to get the full picture yeah. of 
a Usagi story. Man. Grass cutter's always on my uh, on my on my to read list. I feel like it's been there for years, but uh, any excuse, man. And the channel's a good excuse, Jimmy. Absolutely. K Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what's out there? Patreon.com slash Jim Rug, where you can get my down my hard to find zines and out of print mini comics. You can see lots of original art, lots of process behind the scenes, making of comics. Patreon.com slash Jim Rug. Coming from the publishers of Yusagi Ojimbo number one, Fantagraphics, <laughs> uh, in May 2021, Red Room. Issue one is going to see the light of day. It's going to start coming out on a monthly basis after that. Man, I can't wait till these box of comps start to pile up here in the kayfabe compound, Jimmy. Uh, the link tree in the description below uh, warehouse is the link uh, to Fantagraphics where you can pre-order the comics. Uh, you can pre-order three issues at this point right now and the trade paper, first trade paperback. Uh, if you want to read the comics ahead of time, hit the Patreon uh, in that same link tree. Three bucks get you the archive, and I have three issues up there right now as we speak. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist KFAB newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with everything we have going on and coming up in 2021. You can also find Cartoonist KFAB t shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Jimmy, go sharpen your swords, man, and give these guys one last set of marching orders. Read more comics. <laughs>